So for the 2018 Toolmakers contest on YouTube, I'm going to make a set of V draws for my vise. I want to have a, a V groove, probably one or two horizontally, and then one vertically, so I can clamp around stuff in my vise without getting a V block or something like that. Um, I have this lovely piece of one inch plate, just hot rolled. It's probably not best choice material wise, but it's what I have kicking around. It's flame cut on this edge, so I'm gonna have to grind that off so it actually machines better. I've heard that this stuff chips carbide, and I believe it from the small amount of cutting done on the lathe. So I'm going to roughly sketch with chalk. So that's where my cut's going to be. I'm going to leave that a little bit wide. Um, I'm going to cut that with the porta band because that's what I have. Uh, there we go. That is pretty ugly. This face mill cuts rough because I have cheap inserts in it that aren't all the same size. I've got some more to do before my finish pass, so that's perfect. So now I'm going to square up the ends. Um, this bar, so I've got my end mill. This end mill is dulled down on the tip, but the sides should be perfectly new. So. Gonna face that off and see what happens. It's a pretty good finish. A uh, uh, little chattery. I don't know. Might be at too high of an RPM. Maybe I'll try stepping it down a notch and see what happens. Uh. The mill trammed in, so this is now square with uh, the bed. It was off, so it's good I'm doing it. I ended up doing it. I didn't video it, ran out of space on the camera, and tramming a mill is rather tedious. I've got the new Shars face mill in with the cheap inserts and I'm going to face this off and then do the other sides. The new face mill I got uses a different corner of the inserts and they're much more accurate so it makes for a much smoother cut. Since my mill was out of tram when I milled them they're not square so I'm gonna put them flush up against this jaw using the, not the, this old Tony technique but the technique I saw on this old Tony I'm sure he's not the first person to think of it uh, just a single parallel and a round piece so there won't be any lift on the part So here's the rough blank for the mill, for the, for the vice draws. Feels pretty good. I can feel a slight ridge, slight difference, but the edges of the, the jaws are also tapered slightly, so that's going to be perfectly fine. The next step is going to be I'm going to drill the mounting holes. Um, I'm going to do that before I do the V 
because if it's gonna drill weird having a slot in the middle. I used the edge finder to find the edge of the part so I knew where to drill the holes. Uh, I set the dial to a hundred thousandths since the edge finder is two hundred thousandths wide once I move back to zero I mean that the center of the cutter would be right at the edge of the part. I'm going to do a voiceover on this one anyway. So with this being loud and that... I had my procedure slightly wrong in this step. I should have laid out the holes, probably center punched them, or at least made a mark. Not that I needed it using the center drill, it would find the, it would be accurate enough, but um, it would let me know that my measurements were wrong because I would have been able to see that the holes weren't centered left to right. Um, as it was, I didn't realize that until I had finished the first hole and started on the second one. That's when I realized that they weren't actually centered on the part. I used an end mill to countersink for the screws. Um, the first end mill I used was really dull, so I had to switch to a smaller one, and then I used the boring bar to bring the holes out to finish size. So I made a mistake when I was laying out the holes. Um, I read my measurement wrong, and rather than going 1.133, I did 1.33. So just a, a brain fart. Um, and so my plan is I'm going to turn down a plug that will fit in here, and then I'll weld it in place. I've got my plug made. It has about a thousandth interference, so should press in just fine. Got the ends chamfered that'll help it press in, and also since I am going to weld it in place, it'll give me a place to have the weld go. So. Back in the welded and back in the mill. There's an ugly pit there. Hopefully it cleans up. If not, well, maybe I'll have a little pit. Or maybe I'll make it where the V is. So I'm really disappointed with the way that weld came out. It looked a lot better than that. I don't know why it's so porous. Um, but this will be on the back side. The front side came out better. There's a few little pits and dings. You can barely see where it went. That's the center drill mark. Um, that should clean up when I end up drilling it. It should go away. Um, you can barely see the outline of the plug. Not real happy with that. Really, if I want it to look nice, I have to start over with a new blank. My mill has a micrometer stop for the quill. You can use it with the power feed to bore down to a blind hole. Um, in this case, I set the tool down to the bottom of the countersink, set the micrometer stop, and then raise the quill up a tiny bit and adjusted it so it'd have a little bit of space down at the bottom. Um, it worked surprisingly well. So here it is. Um, turned out that I put both holes in the wrong spot. I had a transcription error, so they were both offset by 200,000 so um, this is the side with the porosity and then I welded it with a different welding rod um, this was 7018 for some reason it got all porous and I tried to TIG weld this side and it had awful porosity I don't know what happened um, so I ground it down and then welded it with 6011 and that seemed like it worked pretty good I burned in a little too far in a few spots but um, that should be fine. That's on the back side. Um, 
This is the front side they did with 7018. You can see there's some dings in there from that. Um, this one I TIG welded and it came out perfect on this side. Same TIG settings and this side it just kept getting porous and just never went away. So I don't know what was up with that. Um, anyways, so this side's perfect. So now I'm going to see if it fits in the vise. Moment of truth. Uh, yay, if you cut the holes in the right spot, it bolts in and it's centered. So I decided that I'm going to do two grooves on the face, a slightly smaller one up here and a bigger one down below. Um, that's so that you can hold two different size things. If you make the, just a small groove you can't hold something really small um, if you if you make just a big groove you're limited for your minimum diameter and I don't want to get into interfering with these um, the screws they're recessed in there pretty good so it shouldn't be too much of a problem Using a regular end mill for this step might have been better, um, but I decided to use the face mill or the milling cutter because I had it all set up and I wanted to see how it would work for this sort of operation. Um, if I do this again, I might I'll probably try a regular end mill to see how it compares. I suspect it would be smoother than this one. Oh, I've ran into a problem. This is as wide as the vise goes, so I can't clamp it in this direction in the vise. Um, this mill only tilts one direction, so I can't knot it the other way. Um, I think I'm going to swap the jaws around. I don't know how accurate these top plates of the, of the vise are because they're a little dinged up. But actually that doesn't really matter because that'll just change my 45 angle as long as um, I'm still square. Because I want, I want my groove to be perpendicular. That's what matters. If it's tipped this direction, I could care less, right? Um, so, it's, so the V groove is a little, not quite 45 degrees. Um, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so I'll swipe, swap the vice jaws around and we'll get this cut. So I've got the vice jaws swapped around so now I can cut the middle section and just for fun I am going to put two smaller V grooves on the outside just in case if I want to hold something a smaller diameter. don't know why I would but while I'm at it as well. So if you watch closely during this section, you can see the part move in the vise. Um, I didn't realize that until I went to cut some of the later V grooves and saw that they weren't even. Um, since I have a lot less surface area against the vise jaws, I needed to make sure that this was extra tight in the vise um, and take a lighter cut. So I finally got the jaws done for the vise. Got them mounted up here. Um, just as a, not that, no, not that you can't figure out how this works, but just if I want to hold something round, can hold that in there. Um, or horizontally. Um, I don't think I'll need it that often, so I'm going to put keep the regular jaws in here. Um, for most of the time. This one is just mild steel and this edge here is maybe a little bit delicate so I don't want to have it be 
continually clamping and you know against this thin edge I think I'd end up wearing these out um, but if I ever need to drill a cross hole in a bar or a offset hole in the end of something I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.